Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay. I'm with the Department of Academic Technology here at San Francisco State. This is a recorded version of the Canvas Studio workshop. Canvas Studio is Canvas's in-house video platform tool, so we are going to take a deeper dive into that. So let's get started. So we're going to cover a few things in this workshop basic navigation, the My Library section of Canvas Studio, what you can do with Canvas Studio, like adding videos, recording videos, and how you can use Canvas Studio in your courses. So I'm going to just get right into it. First things first, how do we access Studio in Canvas? So once you log into Canvas Studio, you're going to probably land on the Canvas dashboard. To get to Studio, you're going to want to click on the Studio link from the Canvas Global Navigation menu. It will most likely be listed at the very bottom here. If you click on Studio, it's going to take you to the My Library section. So the My Library section is the main page of Studio. You can find all your videos here. Uh, if this is the first time you're using the tool, you're probably going to see nothing in the middle. You're just going to see no videos yet. But my account has some videos already tied to it. So as for basic structure, this goes the main contents in the middle here. In the top right hand corner, we have some main buttons. So we have the search button that allows you to easily find specific videos by typing in search cues. Uh, next to that, we have add. The add button allows you to add new content to Canvas Studio. So if you have raw media files like .mp4s, .movs, those can all be added through there. But if you also have YouTube videos or Vimeo videos, you can add them to your library as well. And we'll get into that in a bit. The next option that Studio has is its ability to record. So you can record your screen and your webcam using Canvas Studio, and that will feed right back into your library. It's really cool, and we'll check it out in a bit. But underneath those three buttons, we have this plus collection button. So you can kind of think of collection like a folder that you put things into that help you categorize things. A collection is basically that. You can have a collection named design and put all your design videos in that one folder. Um, if you are adding videos to your courses in Canvas, Canvas is automatically going to create a collection for each of your courses. You can find those collections by clicking on the three lines in the top left corner of Studio. Click on those three lines and there's going to be the section called Course Collections. Um, so as you add videos, Canvas Studio videos that is, to your courses, these will start to appear under Course Collections. They'll be the name of your course and when you click on them, you'll see videos that are specifically tied to that one course. So I'm going to go back to this list over here because this is kind of the main menu for Canvas Studio. So other than the My Library, you have this Shared With Me section. With your Canvas Studio content, you have the ability to share your videos with other SF State users. So if you wanted comments or feedback on a video, you have the ability to do that. Um, so if you are sharing videos out with other users, they would go to the studio link and then go to shared with me and they would see any videos that were shared with them. And this also applies to you as well. The next thing on this list is settings. So I'm not going to click on my settings link because it looks a lot different than what you're going to see since I'm an admin. But in the settings, you're able to create user groups. User groups are helpful in the sense where if you have a group you're, of people you're working with and you need to constantly share video content with that group of people, you can create that group of people. And instead of having to share each and every person every time to every video, you can just go into the video, choose the group you want to share it with, and makes your life a lot easier. So that's about it for this main area of uh, studio. So I'm going to go back to the My Library because there's a lot more things you can do with that. So in the My Library, each one of these is a video. If you hover your cursor or your mouse over it, you're going to get this overlay that says view and that will bring you into the details area of your video. So, but before I get into there, I'm going to talk about these three dots. The three dots is very important. So 
From this three dots menu, you can do a variety of things. You can create quizzes, annotate, edit, share, as I mentioned before. You can move it to different collections. You can replace the thumbnail, which is the picture that shows directly on your My Library, and you can delete the media. So we'll get into quizzes in a bit, uh, but I'm going to start off with annotating your video. So how do you annotate your video? What is annotating? So annotating your video looks like a little text overlay when the video is playing. So as your video progresses, you can add little text overlays at certain points in the video for students or viewers to see. So let me show you how to do that. So you go to any video, you click on the three dots, and then you click annotate video. So this one already has an annotation on it from prior. So you can identify it because it's just this little circle right here and I can edit it by clicking on it. But if I want to create a new one, I can go to say two seconds in. So click anywhere on this little timeline bar and then click the white circle plus button. You click that and you get the options to add a headline. This is kind of the main bolded text that you'll see. So I'll put thoughts and then description. This might be a question or do you, ooh, do you like SF State? I can even put a link in here if I wanted to. So AT site. PS, I'll put our website here. And then once you're done adding your annotation, just press save. So now when the video gets to two seconds, this is automatically going to display whoever's for whoever's watching. Um, once they're done reading this, they can press continue and it will continue playing the video like normal. So once you're done adding all your annotations, you can press done in the top right corner and then that will save it to that one video. So then whenever you add that video elsewhere to any of your courses, um, those annotations will appear. They're going to be stuck and tied to that one video. Next on our three dots menu is this edit media option. So this edit media option only is available for videos that you've uploaded that you have the raw file for or you've recorded directly using Canvas Studio. So doesn't apply for YouTube or external videos. Edit media, if you click on it from the three dots menu, the main capabilities, editing capabilities that is, that Canvas Studio gives you is the ability to trim the video or cut the video. So if I wanted to trim the edges off this video, I can click on trim and then I'll say I don't want that much and I don't want that much. All you do is click and drag those bolded white bars and then once you're done, press confirm trim. That will cut off whatever you've selected to keep or the red area will cut off. Um, and you can see that here and you can also choose cut and you can cut out certain parts of your video. So I'm not going to go through cut, but I'm ready for this one to be done. And so I'll press save. I have the option here if I want to replace the original or create a copy. Um, I want to just replace this because I think it's perfect as is. So that will now change that video from being, I think, like eight seconds to six seconds. And you can see that here. Next on the three dots is the share media. So like I was mentioning earlier, this is one of the ways you can share it. Uh, you click on the three dots and you click share media. This will then bring a pop-up window up and you will automatically be on this people tab. This is where you would want to search the name or email address of the person you're trying to share with. And again, it must be a SF state user. You can't share it out with external users, at least at this point in time. Um, so I'm going to share it with my lead. 
It might be easier to search them by email because it's just going to try and search all SF State users, which is a lot. So once you type their name, you select it from the drop down, they'll show up here. You can control their access, so by default it will go to view, can view. That will allow them to view, copy, and share the video. But you can also give them access to edit your video. This one might you might want to be cautious about because edit has pretty much full access to that video. So they can make annotations, they can make quizzes, they can trim the video, they can pretty much do anything you can do with that video. And anything that they do to the video will also apply to your version of it. They're pretty much one and the same as if you're sharing the same file. So just be wary of that. Um, and then, so once you've chosen their access, you would just press, press update and they can find the video in their shared with me section. If you needed a public link for some reason or wanted to share this as a URL somewhere in your Canvas courses, you can do that by clicking links and then creating public link. You can paste this link wherever you need to and there's even an embed code. Um, so that, that's how you can do that. I'm not going to share this, so I'm just going to cancel out. So that's how you share. Next on the three dots is move to. So if I had collections here, I could move this video into a new collection, but I don't have any aside from my course collections. So now the last main thing here is replace thumbnail, which I said you can just replace the picture of your studio video. And then lastly, deleting media. So if you didn't want it there, you, you have total control of deleting it from your library. So that's the three dots. Next, we're going to get into the actual details of your video after it's been uploaded. So once I've uploaded a video, I can hover over it and click on view. This will automatically bring me into the comments tab of the video. So if you've shared it with other people, you will see any comments they've left here. Um, main thing here are the details tab. If you go into the details tab, you can edit the details by clicking edit details. This is the only place you can change the title of the video. So I just want to do hi and you can add video description and tags. Tags just help uh, really for searching purposes. So maybe if I wanna add the tag workshop and then press save to save any changes. So details tab, comments tab, and then the insights tab. So the insights tab is a very unique feature within Canvas. Um, it, Canvas Studio is really the only video tool inside of Canvas, at least for SF State, that has the ability to track which students have watched the video and for how long. So when you go to the Insights tab of your video, you'll see a list of anyone who's watched it. You'll see their name and you'll see the duration of how long they've watched the video for. So pretty useful if you are a faculty that's interested to in seeing who's actually watched your content. And then lastly is this captions tab. This captions tab will allow you to automatically generate computer generated captions. So if you didn't want to spend the time typing out captions, uh, you can click on this request button. Request, I want to choose the language, do English, and then request. So what that's going to do is change it into processing mode. And once your captions are available, Canvas will send you an email letting you know that captions are now available for this video. Now this feature is only available for videos that you uploaded, so it does not apply to YouTube videos or any external videos uh, because the closed captioning should be available in the original source. So only content that you've manually uploaded using a raw media file or recorded using Canvas Studio. 
so that's the main tabs within this area. Lastly is the three dots on directly on the video player. If you click on those, you also have the ability to share here and then download media. Uh, downloading media might be good in the case if you lose the original file. So, and then again, you can delete it. So that's the main video tabs and video area. Let's go back to the My Library and we'll get into how you actually add new videos to your course or to your Canvas Studio. So if you've just recorded something and you've saved your video as a .mp4 or .mov or some type of video file and you wanted to get it onto Canvas, uh, you can do that using Canvas Studio. So the way you add new content is by going to Studio and clicking on the Add button in the top right corner. Once you click on that, you'll be presented with two main options. Browse files will give you the option to grab files that are stored locally on your computer. So those are those raw media files. So if I click on browse files, I have some videos here. I'm going to choose this first one. It's super short. And then press open. I'm on a Mac, so it opens my finder. If you're on a PC, it will probably open File Explorer. Once it once you choose it, it's automatically going to begin uploading into your My Library. The three dots here indicate that it's processing. Uh, the shorter the video, the faster it will process, uh, and so on. So if you don't have the raw media file and you wanted to upload a YouTube file, you can also choose this Add button. And then if you have the YouTube link, all you need to do is just paste it into this field right here, and then choose Add Video. This will then add the video directly into your My Library section. Um, with YouTube videos, you have the option to create quizzes, annotate videos, share them. So a few options that might be helpful in like student engagement and things of that sort. So next, we're going to talk about how you actually record using Canvas Studio. You can capture your screen, you can capture a webcam, and then that can just be automatically put into your My Library section. So first, you actually have to go into Studio, and in the top right corner, you want to hit on Record. Once you click Record, you have two options, Screen Capture and Webcam Capture. Webcam will only give you the option to record your face, uh, but if you click on Screen Capture, that's actually going to open up a software on your computer called Screen Recorder Launcher. So I'm going to choose Screen Capture. It's automatically going to start loading that tool and opening it up on my computer. If you have not used this and this is your first time using the Screen Capture, it's going to prompt you to download the software onto your computer. So please press the blue download button and then you'll be able to have that option. So let's get into the actual recorder. So after clicking on the screen capture button, the screen recorder software will open. It looks exactly like you're looking at on this screen here. Uh, you can see what's actually going to be recorded on your screen with this dotted frame. If you drag the arrows or the corners, you can expand the specific area you want to capture. But if you wanted to use your full screen, the easiest way to do that is just go to the size area and then choose full screen. You don't see the dotted lines anymore. That means you have the full, full area of your desktop. If you didn't want this little webcam, as you can see, this is the MacBook camera that it's bringing up. Uh, I can just choose screen. That little window will go away. If I just wanted my webcam, then it will show just my webcam. Uh, but I know a lot of people like to use both, so it does have that option. Uh, as you can see, it's capturing my audio. If you need to change your mic, you can click on this little arrow. That's going to bring up any microphone that's um, associated with your device or connected to your device. I have a lot, so don't mind me. I'll close out of that. And then computer audio is pretty much important if you're rec while you're screen recording, you're recording a video. Like a, if you're playing a YouTube video and you want them to hear the sound of that YouTube video, you need to have your computer audio, audio on 
because otherwise they won't they won't be able to hear it. I don't need that, so I'm just gonna leave that as is. There's additional settings if you wanna get into uh, it further in the preferences, but this is really the main, main stuff. So once I'm ready and I have my full screen enabled, I'm gonna press this red record button. It's gonna give me a nice little countdown and I'll say this is my test video for the recorded workshop. Yay, okay. Press that blue button to pause it. It will pause it. I can continue rec the recording by clicking on record, um, but I'm done with this. It looks good to me. I'll press done. Once I press done, it's going to open this little editor window. I can add a title here. I'll say workshop tester. And this, I can add a description. Hi, sure. And this will go into that details area of the video tab that we were looking at, or the details tab. And you can always change this after the fact, but this looks good to me. In this little editor, you really only have the option to trim the video. So if I wanted to cut off that front part and maybe a second towards the back, uh, that looks good. And then once you're all ready, you just press upload. That will then load this progress bar. Uh, you definitely don't want to stop it in the middle, but then it will go upload successful and it will automatically show up in your My Library section of Canvas Studio. So let's take a look at that. So once you see that upload successful and you press continue, you'll see it directly appear on your My Library section of Canvas. And then you'll have all the abilities that we talked about earlier, uh, so you can play around with that. Next section we're gonna get into is how you actually add these videos to your courses. Once you've uploaded your media to Canvas Studio, you have the ability to add it in a variety of places to your course. Uh, one of the main ways is through a module, which we'll get into right now, but you can also add it to a page, assignments, quizzes, anywhere you can see the rich content editor, you can add Canvas Studio content to it. So the easiest way to get Canvas Studio content to your course is by adding it through a module. So right here I have my course displayed. I'm inside my course. I have three modules here. If you need to add a module, you can click on that plus module button. But to add a Canvas Studio content to it, you go to the module you want to add it to. So I'll add it to this one here and then click on the plus icon directly to the right of it. Once you click on that plus icon, you're going to get a drop down menu at the top. It's most likely going to say assignment, but you need to change that to external tool. Uh, even though it says Canvas on it, Canvas Studio is still considered a external tool. So I'm going to choose Canvas Studio and then it's going to bring up my library. So everything that's you've uploaded to the my library is going to show up here. Uh, I'm going to select this video that we just recorded. So hover over it and press select. And then I get two options here. This first one's called display media tabs. If you want that enabled or if you enable it, uh, you're going to see those tabs that you saw when clicking on the video from the main My Library page. So you'll see details, you'll see comments, insights, and captions. Those tabs will display directly underneath the video player for anyone who's watching the video. The second option is not very popular, uh, display download option. So that will display a button that will allow students in the course to download the file, the video file onto their device. So I'm not sure if you want video, uh, students to have that type of access. Most of the time I don't see it enabled, but if you do, you can turn it on and they'll be able to download it. So I don't want either of these, so I'll leave them gray and then press embed. It will bring me back to this screen and all I want to do is press add item. Once it's been added, it will be listed at the very bottom of the module. It will be named whatever the video title is named. You can change that by clicking on the three dots on the right and then clicking edit. And I'll say watch. 
and then press update and that will change the title of it. That won't change the title of the video in your My Library section. It's just going to change the title of how it appears on the module. Uh, you can then move this video to a different location by using the dots on the left and dragging and dropping. Um, and then be sure to publish the video so students have access to it. Uh, by default, when you add them, it will be unpublished. So just click on that gray circle. That will publish it. Then you can click on it. So can your students. Uh, and they'll be able to watch that video in a new tab. The next area in your course where you can add Canvas Studio content to is a page. A page is really useful if you need to add additional context to that video. Um, when you add it to a module, you're only able to see the video player, but if you add the video to a page, you can also write some text about it that might be helpful for your students. So if you go into your course and you've already, already created a page, you can click on that page. And here's an example of what it would look like uh, after, after you've already added it. So you have the video, they can play it directly on the page and they can see any information you've added. But if you need to add it to a page, go to the page, then click edit. In here, if you ever need to delete a video from a page, you just wanna click on it directly and you can press delete from your keyboard. So now I have this lovely area that I wanna add a video to, you can click anywhere in this text box where you want to add it. So I'm going to want it right here. So then I choose the Canvas Studio uh, button from the Rich Content Editor. So if you don't see it listed here, it's most likely, well, it is going to be listed in this plugin icon. You want to click this plug and then choose View All. This will bring up a list of all the options for you and you wanna choose Canvas Studio. This will then bring up that My Library pop-up, give you a list of all the videos you have available. And I can choose, say, this one here to add it. And you have those same embed options. So we can ignore those and I'll just press embed and it will add it directly onto the page. If you want to make this video player bigger, you can click directly on it and use the arrows to expand that player. So that will make it a little bigger. I'm pretty satisfied with the page, so I want to just press save. All right, and now the video has saved to this page. So when students click on the page from the module, they'll easily be able to see the video and anything you've added. The next place you can add Canvas Studio content to in your course is within assignments. You can either add them to assignment descriptions or you can enable an assignment to have students submit videos using Canvas Studio. So in my course, I have a few assignments already. You would want to create an assignment first and then um, we can add the content to it later. So I have this assignment here. So I'm gonna go into it. This is the main page of the assignment. So as you can see, I've already added some Canvas Studio content. Um, this is really useful in the sense where if you don't wanna write out written instructions for your students, you can create a video and then upload it directly to the assignment description. Um, or if you had a YouTube video that you wanted to give some, they, you needed them to respond to, you can add that YouTube video directly in the assignment description without just pasting the URL that is. So if you click on edit here, it would, if you wanna add Canvas Studio content to the assignment description, it's exactly the same as how you would do it to a page. You would click somewhere in the description box and then choose that Canvas Studio option, find the video that you want to add. In this case, if I want a YouTube video, I'll select that one. And then with YouTube, you also have the option if you want to start it at a specific time. This video is only two minutes, so not that big of a deal. But let's say I wanted to start it at um, one second or one minute and one second specifically. 
then I can set that so that when students play it, it's automatically at one minute and one second. So I'll press embed. It will add to the instructions. So that's how you add it to your assignment description. But if you wanted to make this an assignment where studio students submit videos to you, then in the assignment settings, the main setting that you need to be on the lookout for is the submission type. So submission type controls how your students can submit to your assignment. So you want to make sure that it's set to online. You have a few options, but make sure it's set to online. And then the main thing here is you need to have file uploads checked. That will enable them to get the option for Canvas Studio. Uh, you can have all these others checked if you want, but file uploads is the one that gives them the Canvas Studio option. So you can also set up any additional settings that you need, but I'm gonna press save. And now students can see, watch this video, respond to the video. Uh, and also if I go into student view, I'll be able to see that students can upload assignments using Canvas Studio. All they would do is click on that. They have the same capabilities that you do as a faculty. They can record, they can add media files, and if they've used the add feature, they would just select the specific one from their library and then press submit assignment. So pretty streamlined uh, place for student submissions. Another feature that comes with assignments and Canvas Studio is that you can assign a Canvas Studio quiz. So that looks like an assignment, but with a Canvas Studio quiz integrated into it so that it's actually worth a grade for your students. So a Canvas Studio quiz is a little bit more of an advanced feature in, within Canvas Studio. Uh, it um, pretty much enables you to add questions at certain points in a video that your students have to respond to uh, and get points for. So as a video is playing, a question will prompt, they will have to answer to that question, and they can then see the results. So we can see how that all works out right now. So the first step in making a studio quiz is actually going to studio and the my library section. So I have this video, the seven second video that we just captured, and I want to make this a quiz. So what I would do is click on those three dots and say create quiz. So for one video, you can actually create multiple quizzes. Um, so if you had uh, different sections and you wanted different questions to pop up, you can create individual quizzes for the same video, but I'm only going to create this one. So I'm going to give it a title. I'll tell a test quiz. I uh, give it a description quiz. Sure. All right. Under your description, you have two options here. Hide question markers on timeline for students. So as the video is playing, if you hide the question markers, students won't be able to tell when a question is going to come up. So say you have like a 30 minute video and you want your students to watch the full 30 minute video without just skipping directly to the questions, you would want to hide those question marks. So they have to watch it to find where the questions are actually at. If you don't choose to hide it, they'll see a little question bubble on the little timeline and they can click on that question button and it will just automatically prompt them the question. The next option here is allow displaying annotations. So if you've already created annotations for this video, you can allow them to display during this quiz or to hide them. I don't want the annotations to display, so I will keep this like that. But if you did want them to display, just make sure you check it and it's green. So I'll leave that blank and then get started. This now takes you into the kind of quiz making area. So I have my video here and I can go to any point in the video where I want a question to be popped up for students. So I'll go to second one, the first second of the video, and this plus circle icon will allow me to choose a type of question I want to add. 
So I say I want a multiple choice question, so I'll click on that. This is the main question that you want to ask them. So well, for briefness, I'm gonna just put SFSU colors. What are they? The right answer, gold and purple. Um, I'll do green and yellow for other universities around here, and blue and yellow. So to add other options, you would just click on this plus answer and you get uh, additional options, but I'll trash that one. Uh, underneath your your choices, you have other options, so vary by points. If you have that check, you can make sure that gold and purple, the right answer, gets two points, uh, and none of these get, all of the other ones get zero points. The second option will shuffle these choices around. Um, so if I didn't want gold and purple to always be first, then I would want this checked off. Uh, I don't really care that much about shuffling choices, so I will uncheck that. This last area here, question feedback, you can leave some fee general feedback based on what a student responds to the question. So if they got it correct, you could say, have the quiz display great in the result, incorrect, or uh, regardless of the answer, you can also enter comments. So I only want to reward them if they got it right, so I'll press save. So now uh, you can see that there's a question here because this pencil icon pops up. If you click on that, you're able to edit the question. Uh, and then you can go to other points in the videos to add more. But once you're done, you can just press done in the top right corner. And now you'll see that in the top right corner of your little thumbnail, there's a rocket icon. That indicates that you've added a studio quiz to that video. Now that you've added it, you need to make it worth a grade inside your course. So we gotta leave studio area and go into a course. Now that we're inside the course, we need to go to the assignments area and create a new assignment. So if we go to assignments and click plus assignment, that will take us into this settings page. I'm gonna call this studio quiz. You can name it whichever you like. But the main thing here is we need to click on this Canvas Studio button. Once we click that, then we need to choose the video that we just added a quiz to. So right here. So I'll hover over it and select it. Now, instead of standard embed, we want to choose video quiz embed. This will allow us to choose that quiz we just created. If you had multiple quizzes, you would see them all listed here, but we only have one. So I'm gonna select the test quiz and then select embed. What that's gonna do is bring it into this big uh, box right here. I'll expand it a bit. And now you can see that it's preparing your quiz. So that's the main step for the assignment, but then you can scroll down and you can change the points. Uh, I can make this worth 100 points, I can make this worth 50 points. Um, in the quiz, we only set it up to have that one question that was worth two points. Um, so technically, Canvas is going to do those calculations for you. So if a student gets two out of two and the assignment's worth 20 points, they would get the full 20 points. If they got less than that, then Canvas would adjust and auto-calculate their grade for you. So I'll leave it at 20 points. You can move it into a specific assignment group uh, and then set up due dates, but for time saving this, I'm just going to press save and publish. Save and publish will make it available to students. So now when your students go to their assignments and click on studio quiz, they will pull this up. And if I go into student view, you can see exactly how they'll see it. So get started, they'll click on that, and they'll be able to take the quiz as the video is playing. So the one second in, boom, question comes up, choose the answer, and they have to get to the end of the quiz to be able to submit it. And that's how you integrate Canvas Studio into um, a quiz, into an assignment. So the next thing you can do with Canvas Studio is have studio content within quiz questions. So this is a normal quiz and within the question there is video content added to it. So to do that, we're gonna go back into this course 
and then go into a quiz I've already created. If you don't have a quiz already, you'll need to go to quizzes and then create a new quiz. So quizzes plus quiz, but I'm gonna work off of this one. I'll click on it, and if you've already created one, you need to go in and edit the quiz. So click on edit, and we don't really care about the details tab. This is all the main settings of the quiz. We wanna go to the questions tab. Once in here, you can see a completed example of what this looks like. So we have the question and a video tied directly to the question. Um, but to create that, we wanna go to the bottom here and then create a new question. You wanna choose the type of question you're creating. So most popular are these top two choices here, but it can be really any of these. So I'll just put true or false for simplicity. This is the nickname. So we'll put uh, gator mascot. Let me delete that out. And then if I wanted to attach a Canvas Studio content here, you need to click on that Canvas Studio integration button again. So click on that, and then if you have a specific video you want to tie into that question, I'll just select this one here. And you can choose when you want it to start, if it is a super long video. Uh, this one's only two minutes, so I don't need to set it at a specific time. And then if you want to display those tabs, the insights, the comments, those tabs at the bottom, you would check this, but I don't really need that because it's going to be a part of the quiz. Um, so I'll leave that unchecked. I won't put a specific time and I'll just click embed. That's going to bring this video player into the question itself. You can adjust the size by clicking directly on the video and using the corners. So I can make that smaller. And then underneath it, I can actually type out a question if you need it to. So SFSU's mascot is the gator. This is true. Um, and then you want to, when you're done making all your question edits, you want to do update question. So now this question here is listed with the video content. Uh, you want to make sure to save your questions after you've been working on them. That just saves the, all the questions and the quiz itself. And then we can go into preview mode to see how these questions will actually look um, for your students. So if I scroll down to the one we just made, I'll say true. And then I'd have to fill out the rest to actually submit the quiz. But this is how you can integrate Canvas Studio content in your quiz questions. So uh, that's pretty much all of the studio quiz functionalities. So if you ever have questions about it, feel free to contact our team, Academic Technology at San Francisco State. Thanks for watching.